Hi, and welcome to the MSC Counseling Research Conference. My name is Lena Fiebrens, and today I'll be sharing with you about my research dissertation, Third Culture Kids, Exploring Cross-Cultural Moves, Attachment, and the Therapeutic Relationship. During this presentation, I'll be sharing with you about the background and the rationale for my research, my research question and hypotheses, the methodology that I employed, the results that I found, and finally, I'll explain what these findings mean, their impact on the real world, and potential areas for future research. To begin, it is important to explain what defines a third culture kid and what makes them different. Third culture kids are defined by Pollock and Van Recken as individuals who have spent a significant period of their developmental years in a country outside of their parents' culture or their passport culture. This is displayed in this third culture model where an interstitial third culture is formed between parental and host country cultures. For TCKs, the developmental years are often defined by frequent cross-cultural moves, changing schools and changes in relationships. The frequent changes in community inevitably lead to a cycle of saying goodbye to old friends and integrating into new social environments. Therefore, TCKs experience recurrent relationship losses that over time can result in unresolved grief and established patterns of behavior to protect the TCK from further loss, such as maintaining distance from others in anticipation of future separation. The developmental years of an individual's life play a significant role in shaping how they interact with the world around them. Attachment theory states that children internalize their early experiences of their relationship with their attachment figure, such as the mother, to create an internal working model of themselves and others. This internal working model acts as a prototype for later relationships, influencing the individual's attachment style. Attachment styles are often found to be associated with interpersonal communication, social behavior, and interpersonal competency. And Bartholomew and Horowitz suggested a model of adult attachment styles. They outlined four types of attachment, secure, preoccupied, dismissing, and fearful. This model and the attachment styles are displayed in this figure. As can be seen, secure attachment is comprised of a positive model of the self, characterized by low levels of dependence, and a positive model of others, characterized by low levels of avoidance, and this allows the individual to be comfortable with intimacy and autonomy. Moving on to preoccupied attachment, associated with a negative model of self, meaning high levels of dependence, and a positive model of others, meaning low levels of avoidance and therefore the individual tends to be frequently preoccupied with relationships. Dismissing attachment is composed of a positive model of the self with low levels of dependence and a negative model of others with high levels of avoidance. And this kind of individual may be dismissing of intimacy and counterdependent. And finally, fearful attachment involves a negative model of the self and others, meaning the individual would have high levels of both dependence and avoidance. And as a result, they may be fearful of intimacy or socially avoidant. While attachment theory states that attachment styles are formed during early childhood, research suggests that attachment styles continue to change and develop and remain dynamic throughout one's lifespan. Furthermore, research has recognized the value of adolescent friendships and their relationship with long-term developmental outcomes, including psychological well-being and the quality of adult relationships. Therefore, it's evident that the developmental years contribute substantially to an individual's well-being and their ability to build healthy relationships. The effect of a highly mobile childhood on attachment is particularly relevant in the context of counseling due to the significance of the therapeutic relationship. This relationship between the therapist and a client is described as a working alliance and is considered a strong predictive factor of therapeutic outcome. The quality of a working alliance can be influenced by a client's attachment style as it determines how the client approaches the therapeutic relationship. And studies report that clients with secure attachment styles formed effective therapeutic relationships, while clients with fearful attachment styles experienced problems forming a strong alliance. Additionally, clients with dismissive attachment styles formed a superficial relationship with little self-disclosure and reported experiencing a deteriorating relationship towards the end of therapy. Furthermore, those with preoccupied attachment styles were found to develop a strong working alliance, potentially due to their desire for intimacy and fear of abandonment. When it comes to adult third culture kids, research posits that they frequently experience challenges with relationships and develop unique patterns of building relationships. 
Mellis and Frey, for example, highlight that ATCKs often engage in self-protective factors such as emotional disengagement, role-playing or people-pleasing, abandoning relationships, physically distancing, and remaining detached as a defense mechanism. It has been reported that the recurring experience of transient and fleeting relationships due to the highly mobile childhood can result in commitment fears and a tentativeness to get close to others. Despite the quality of attachment with early attachment figures, the extensive loss of relationships, communities, cultures, and homes throughout their lives increases the likelihood of injured trust over time in dependable and stable attachment bonds. As a result of this research, my study explored how a highly mobile childhood impacts on attachment and the therapeutic relationship and aimed to answer the question of, is there a significant difference in the number of moves and the experience of the therapeutic relationship between attachment styles for adult TCKs? My two hypotheses were, ATCKs with insecure attachment styles will have experienced a significantly higher number of moves before the age of 18 than ATCKs with secure attachment styles. And ATCKs with insecure attachment styles will have a significantly lower rating of their experience of the therapeutic relationship than ATCKs with a secure attachment style. Moving on to the methodology that was employed in this study. The final analysis included 226 participants between the ages of 18 and 76. The sample consisted of 169 women, 54 men, and two participants who preferred to self-describe. 149 individuals had previous experience of counseling, and of these individuals, 108 had experienced multiple counseling relationships. Only ATCKs who moved abroad due to parental occupation where housing and education was provided through the employer um, were included in this study. And this was to reduce the impact of confounding variables such as trauma that is often experienced by refugee children or forced migrants, ensuring the emphasis remained on the consequences of a highly mobile childhood and dynamic cultural contexts. Additionally, individuals whose first international move was at the age of 16 or above um, were excluded from the study as their time abroad did not constitute the two full years. This study adopted a between subjects research design. The independent variable was the attachment style and the dependent variables were the number of moves and the ratings of the therapeutic relationship. The measures used in this study included the attachment style questionnaire, which is based on Bartholomew and Horowitz's model of attachment, and the past tense revised short version of the working alliance inventory, which measures an individual's experience of the therapeutic relationship. In terms of the procedure used for the study, initial ethical approval was granted by the Bangor University School of Psychology, Ethics and Research Committee. Participants were recruited through uh, opportunity sampling and advertisements shared on social media and through the tckresearch.com website. Data was collected through an online Qualtrics questionnaire, including demographic questions, the attachment style questionnaire, and the short revised version of the Working Alliance inventory. Moving on to the results, descriptive analyses revealed that the mean response of number of moves was 6.19. And for the total Working Alliance inventory score, the mean response was 61.37. When analyzing participant responses to the attachment style questionnaire, 31 participants were considered to have secure attachment, followed by 71 with fearful attachment, 39 with dismissing attachment, and 79 with preoccupied attachment. When considering the first hypothesis, it was hypothesized that there would be a significant difference in the mean number of moves across attachment styles, with insecure attachment styles having significantly higher number of moves than the secure attachment style. A Kruskal Wallace H test showed that there was not a statistically significant difference in number of moves between attachment styles. Therefore, this hypothesis was not supported. The second hypothesis stated that there would be a significant difference between readings of the therapeutic alliance as measured by Y scores across attachment styles, with insecure attachment styles having significantly lower Y scores than the secure attachment style. A Kruskal Wallace H test revealed that there was a statistically significant difference in Y scores between attachment styles, and therefore this hypothesis was supported. To identify where this difference was found, six post hoc independent t-tests were conducted. 
As displayed in this graph, these tests revealed that participants with fearful attachment had significantly lower Y scores than participants with secure dismissing attachment, and participants with preoccupied attachment had significantly lower Y scores than participants with secure or dismissing attachment. There were no statistical differences in Y scores found between participants with secure and dismissing attachment or participants with fearful and preoccupied attachment. Moving to the discussion, the findings of this study reveal that contrary to the first hypothesis, there was no significant statistical difference in number of moves between secure, fearful, dismissing, and preoccupied attachment styles. While there is no previous research directly focusing on quantitatively exploring number of moves before the age of 18 and attachment styles among ATCKs, qualitative research has suggested that ATCKs tend to have more insecure attachment styles and demonstrate behaviors such as emotional disengagement that reflect common characteristics of insecure attachment styles. The contrary findings of this study may be due to differing participant samples or research methods, However, they may also reflect the complexity of attachment styles and ATCK experiences. As attachment theory states, attachment is primarily formed with the main attachment figure, often the mother, in a child's life. While attachment remains dynamic and is influenced by factors such as community and life experiences, it may be argued that the specific variable of number of moves may not be sufficient when examining an ATCK's attachment style. Focusing on the number of moves experienced may provide general insight into potential cultural and community shifts, however it could neglect to highlight the determining details of an individual's experience and thereby the impact on their attachment style. Confounding variables such as personality type, relationship with parental figures, quality of schooling, and the integration into the cultural context may have a significant impact on shaping an ATCK's attachment style during their developmental years. Factors such as language barriers may impact on the level of integration and engagement with the culture, which in turn can influence the TCK's quality of attachment experiences. Nevertheless, the attachment formed in childhood may continue to shift with career or relationship experiences, potential trauma, and engagement with counseling. However, these factors cannot be controlled within a study while maintaining its ecological validity, and thereby may overshadow the influential element of number of moves. This could indicate that an ATCK's attachment style may be more greatly influenced by the quality of their cross-cultural moves and experiences as opposed to the quantity of them. Unlike the first hypothesis, the second hypothesis was supported, as significant differences between the ratings of the therapeutic relationship were identified. Specifically, these differences were detected between fearful and secure attachment, fearful and dismissing attachment, preoccupied and secure attachment, and preoccupied and dismissing attachment. In each comparison, both ATCKs with fearful and preoccupied attachment styles had significantly lower ratings of the therapeutic relationship than those with secure and dismissing attachment styles. This was partially reflected in and supported by previous research findings, which report that individuals with secure attachment form strong therapeutic alliances, and those with fearful attachments have difficulties building a strong relationship. Contrasting to the higher ratings of participants with dismissing attachment, previous research states that clients with dismissing attachment styles may experience a deteriorating alliance toward the end of counseling. This may reflect a different participant sample and research design employed, as it may be argued that the quantitative approach to assessing attachment and the rating of the therapeutic relationship fails to consider the impact of confounding variables such as culture or number of therapy experiences. Similarly, researchers identified a strong therapeutic relationship formed by clients with preoccupied attachment styles, which remains at odds with the lower ratings found in this study. Once again, the participant sample of ATCKs must be noted, as qualitative studies have revealed that often TCKs feel a sense of lack of being understood by their um, therapists due to their unique experiences, backgrounds, hidden grief, and lack of cultural identity. This highlights a significant need for greater insight into the experiences of ATCKs for therapists, as simply understanding the cultural differences may not suffice in appropriately supporting ATCKs. Building on this study, future research may focus on examining cultural homelessness or belongingness and their effect on attachment to identify the quality of ATCKs cross-cultural moves. 
It may also examine how ATCK specific experiences, lack of belonging and lack of cultural identity may impact on the therapeutic relationship. And finally, future research may employ a qualitative or mixed methods research designs to investigate the variables to obtain more valid information. While there is significant potential for future exploration, the findings of this study carry significant value in their applicability to various settings, primarily as both previous research and the findings of this study point to the importance of considering attachment and developing a successful rapport and therapeutic relationship, this may be an area of focus that is incorporated into the assessment and initial stages of counseling to provide the therapist and client with congruence and a strong foundation for therapeutic work. Additionally, while there was no significant impact of number of moves on attachment styles, the deepened understanding of attachment and consequences of a highly mobile childhood can be integrated into training courses around multicultural competency for counsellors, especially those working with clients from cross-cultural backgrounds, such as refugees. Further, international organizations may consider investing into families of ATCKs to ensure their well-being as they transition between countries, minimizing the risk around moving and providing the necessary support during acculturation and community integration processes. Additionally, ATCKs often engage in online communities to meet like-minded individuals, for which the insight into attachment and the therapeutic potential may offer further sources of support. Nonetheless, while ATCKs may experience significant challenges in their cross-cultural upbringing, there is an abundance of potential benefits, skills, and strengths this lifestyle can equip them with. Further, while attachment styles describe how individuals relate to others, it must be noted that they are not a life sentence, but rather viewing them as an opportunity for growth and self-awareness allows individuals to take full advantage of their therapeutic and life experiences. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. I hope my study can be a source of insight or inspiration for you. And if you do have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you would like more information on this study, please contact me with the email in the description and I'll make sure to send you a copy of the handout.